heard about the new National Republican Party platform and where it stands on human life. We'll lay it out and sort through some of the strange public responses, along with much more today on The Simple Truth. I'm Jim Havens. It is Friday with Father. That's Father Stephen Imbarato, our co-host every Friday, providing cutting-edge pro-life commentary you're not going to hear anywhere else. We consecrate everything to the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the pure, strong, chaste heart of St. Joseph. Always great to be with you, Father. And as I ask you to lead the opening prayer, can we also pray for a special intention that came through to us from a dedicated audience member? Uh, So, Father, I would ask you to add into our opening prayer a petition for a good woman named Diane who has been battling cancer and has an important surgery coming up on Monday. Father, please lead us in an opening prayer. Sure. In the name of Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask, send the Holy Spirit down upon us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together in your name. Lord, may you be with us. We know you're with us, Lord, for we desire to do your will. Always show us your will. Give us the strength to do your will and bless our intentions, not just for this program, but Diane's health, all those who are struggling with spiritual and physical trials and tribulations. Uh, We pray for our nation. We pray for our political leadership. Uh, But in this hour we spent together, most of all, Lord, we pray for our babies who are being mass murdered, that in this hour together we may may not only bring some consolation to those who struggle with trials and tribulations like Diane, but uh, also in some small way bring souls to salvation and bring an end to the scourge of abortion in our cities, our state, our country, and our culture. And we ask this through the intercession of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the angels, martyrs, and saints, in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Father. And, uh, and if you'd be so kind, let's all continue praying for Diane over the weekend. If you remember, may God bless her with complete healing. And of course, Uh, We submit all to his holy will with great confidence in his goodness and love. Um, But let's begin with the National Republican Party. They came out with their new national platform this week, fully cementing what I see as their cowardly retreat on life, led by Donald Trump. And they have their national convention beginning Monday as the sprint toward the November election is heating up. So, Again, let's start with that new National Republican Party platform. The last national platform was from 2016. There was no new platform in 2020. They just kept it the same. And the 2016 platform was about 65 pages. It used the word abortion 35 times. The 2024 platform now approved by the RNC's platform committee on Monday, July 8th. um, And it's scheduled to be formally adopted at the Republican National Convention on Monday. That document clocks in at a lean 16 pages and mentions abortion one time. It's on page 15. Here's the full paragraph so you get it in context. It begins with the heading, Republicans will protect and defend a vote of the people from within the states on the issue of life. And then it states as follows, quote, we proudly stand for families and life. We believe that the 14th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States guarantees that no person can be denied life or liberty without due process and that the states are therefore free to pass laws protecting those rights. After 51 years, because of us, the power has been given to the states and to a vote of the people. We will oppose late-term abortion. There's the one mention while supporting mothers and policies that advance prenatal care, access to birth control, and IVF, and then in parentheses, fertility treatments, end of quote. So that's it. Uh, An absolute disgrace. So let's rip it into the shreds it deserves. Father, you can have first crack your thoughts on what Trump and the Republicans are pushing here. Well, it's... Probably what we should have expected based on what we've gotten leading up to to this from Trump and and the others. uh, They're all they're all jumping off the pro-life bandwagon. Right. J.D. Vance. Right. Coming out for chemical abortions. Trump saying in the debate that he's for chemical abortions. Uh, But the the language in the 14th Amendment or that they reference the 14th Amendment, they reference the 14th Amendment. 
uh, wording-wise properly, but then their interpretation of the 14th Amendment is absolutely wrong. I mean, it's wrong. And it's wrong from the standpoint that the 14th Amendment says no state can deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process, nor can the states uh, deprive any person uh, uh, of equal protection under the law. So it doesn't allow the states to pass life protecting uh, legislation, it's telling the states that you cannot allow abortion, that abortion is against the Constitution, right? Um, So that's so ambiguous. But you know what? I mean, the Republican Party is dumbing down their people, just like the mainstream corporate pro-life movement has been dumbing down their people. They're trying to catch up with the Democrat Party, which has been dumbing down the people of the United States for decades now. Uh, And so misinformation, disinformation uh, is the information. Right. And now you have the remnant, people like you and me and uh, our our faithful followers and the followers of the men's march and rally for personhood who really are the only ones getting the true story. And we're going to talk more about that today, about how many other uh, people are leading uh, uh, the, 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 the mass pro-life movement astray, the average pro-lifer astray. And this Republican platform is exactly that, to say they're pro-IVF, to say that they're pro-fertilization, to say they're a pro-abortive face of contraception, flies in the face of the 14th Amendment, right? Because uh, human life uh, begins at conception. Personhood has to be from conception. That's what we're calling for, the Supreme Court to recognize constitutional person from the moment of conception. So uh, there's this huge contradiction. Uh, But I I have a theory that we'll get to in terms of really what's going on here. And I think it's a very thin silver lining in this very, very serious dark cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot to cover today. Looking forward to it. And yeah, abortion is unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment. If you actually read what the 14th Amendment says, so they're misinterpreting the 14th Amendment or they're lying about it uh, just, again, for political expediency, political idolatry. They think this is the way to uh, to get elected. Um, Again, we uh, might disagree with that. I think there is a, a much better way to go about it, and that is to lead on life instead of retreat on it. Um, but look at how this begins, even uh, th- this uh, this statement. We proudly stand for families and life. Well, they might as well have just said we are unapologetically pro-life or we're 100 percent pro-life. And then we know what comes next. And again, they say they kind of try to pretend that they're affirming the 14th Amendment. Um, But they leave out that whole part of the clause saying, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws, which makes it very clear if that child in the womb is in fact a person, and it is, every human being is a human person, human life begins from conception fertilization, that's a scientific fact, so they have equal protection of the laws That's what the 14th Amendment says. We are not affording them that equal protection of the laws. We are in violation of the U.S. Constitution, the 14th Amendment, and what it says there. It's a constitutional crisis. It needs to be corrected. We need to call upon the Supreme Court to do it. That's what we are proclaiming over and over here. Where is the pro-life movement proclaiming it? Where are they pressing and pushing on it? We're going to get to that today where they even say that they're pressing the 14th Amendment, but they mean something completely different. They're not pressing on it in this way as we're talking about saying abortion is unconstitutional and the Supreme Court needs to rule affirmatively that the preborn child is a person and is protected under the 14th Amendment, which, yes, then ends abortion. It ends all direct intentional killing of human beings in the womb at any time a human being, even outside the womb, human beings that exist right from conception, fertilization, scientific fact, all of those human beings have a right to life 
And and that's a God-given right to life, by the way. But also, it does say it in the Constitution under the 14th Amendment. Um, But but let's get this real quick. I think we can fit this in. Here's a bit of uh, the pro-child murder MSNBC's reporting on the 2024 Republican platform on Tuesday. It starts off with Republicans of old reading portions of Republican platforms from years gone by. Here it is. All right, we're going to hold. Therefore, we affirm our support for a human life amendment to the Constitution. And we endorse legislation to make clear that the 14th Amendment's protections apply to unborn children. We support a human life amendment to the Constitution, and we endorse legislation to make clear that the 14th Amendment's protections apply to unborn children. There should be a human life amendment to the Constitution to give 14th Amendment protection to unborn children. In every presidential election since 1984, the Republican Party platform has included a demand for a national ban on abortion. The 14th Amendment says that a state cannot deprive a citizen of his or her life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And Republicans say they want to extend 14th Amendment protections to fetuses and embryos, which would effectively make all abortions illegal. All right, there's some interesting things in that clip. Glad we were able to sneak it in there. Um, But uh, we're going to talk about it when we get back. And specifically, they're lying specifically explicitly about what the 14th Amendment says. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say any state deprive, nor shall any state deprive any citizen of life, liberty, or property. It says person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law. That matters, that's huge. And we'll talk about what it does say about a citizen and what it does say about a person. We'll reset that to make it clear as soon as we get back, stay tuned. Welcome back to The Simple Truth. Jim Havens here with Father Stephen Imbarato. Right at the end of that last segment, you heard that MSNBC clip. It's important to understand what they're lying about and why. Look, they know what they're doing. They know that this is the the thing that matters and they're trying to protect it and lie about it every chance they get. The sad thing is we have nobody on the Republican side. We have no pro-life leaders, even in uh, seemingly uh, not just in government, but even in uh, just pro-life leadership in general, mainstream mainstream pro-life leadership that are willing to stand up on this and call them out and proclaim it and truly push on this uh, and push to the end with the strength and the fortitude that is necessary to really get some movement. We're we're praying we're praying for all these people, praying for a change of heart, praying that somebody will hear us and start actually acting on what we're saying. Um, But let's just reset this real quick. What does it actually say in the 14th Amendment? The first line in section one, it defines what a citizen is. And then it says no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. But it doesn't end there. It goes on to say, nor shall any state deprive any person. So it does not say any citizen. That's what MSNBC reported that it said. It doesn't say citizen. It says any person, which is expansive. They could have used the word citizen and and been very clear. We're talking about citizens here. No, they expanded it and say any person. uh, We can't deprive any person of life, liberty or property without due process of the law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So look, is, a, is every human being a human person? Of course they are. Is the child in the womb a human being? Yes. Then they're a human person with equal protection of the laws and, and they also have due process of the laws. So look, abortion is unconstitutional. That's what it says. Trump won't lead on it and fight on it. If he did and stood up and did it, which is what we've been asking and calling for any Republican leader during the primary primary process to take this up. Uh, I think we'd be looking at, at a much different story right now, um, far better th- than what we're looking at here. But uh, Father, your thoughts on it? Well, it's a political chess game. So, I mean, this, this, this came to me a little bit earlier. And so let me try and lay this out. Now, of course, you know, what MSNBC is doing is they know that the Republicans basically have deflated the key ball that the Democrats were going to use to win this election. Let's face it. 
It was very, very clear up to the last debate that now turned the whole Democratic Party into one chaotic, confusing mass that abortion was going to be their flagship. That's it. Right. Uh, the, the, the Republicans, from a political standpoint, I'm always concerned about what is God going to bless? God's not going to bless, in my mind, what the Republicans are doing. And I think that's exactly what you're saying. But let's just look at this politically. All right. The Demo- the Republicans are trying to take the, the wind or the air out of the ball or the sails of the uh, uh abortion plank that the Democrats want to use to beat the Republicans over the head. All right. Um, And uh, I I think that the the Republican platform using bullet points, right, those 20 bullet points that don't mention abortion, I think from a strategic standpoint, we have a low information populace. Bullet points are key. Um, I had to go down that list twice to see that abortion was not part of it. All right. So here's what I'm going to speculate. And I posted this on social media just the other day. A prayer intention as part A and part B, that the confusion and the chaos that has now engulfed the Democrat Party continues. And it's almost biblical, right? I mean, if you look at how God vanquished the enemies of Israel in the Old Testament, it was by creating chaos and confusion amongst their ranks during or before uh, these battles, right? Um, and, the, and the Israelite Israelites were well, able to, to vanquish them. Well, that seems to be what's happening now. So MSNBC and, of course, the mainstream media it's on doing the bidding of the Democrats want to keep abortion in the forefront. And they want to lie about what the Republicans claim to be doing. All right. Uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping. Right. And that that the Republican strategy is exactly that. That we're going to sandbag our way through this election. Right. Making it seem as if abortion's not even on our radar. And the second part of my prayer intention is that after the election, they revert back to the party of Lincoln, abolitionist. Right. Uh, And I was thinking, you know, just recently somebody was telling me how uh, Lincoln was a practical atheist, uh, 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 had left leaning type of ideas, right? He wasn't the, obviously he was a, 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 a not a state's rights guy. He was protecting the union. Uh, but I saw some similarities between Lincoln and Trump, right? Trump is not a committed Christian, right? Uh, but he's, he's concerned about his legacy. So the, the silver lining I see, I'm hoping, I'm praying for, Right. Is that the the Republicans are making a a, a political uh, laying out a political strategy whereby abortion is not on the agenda until after the election. We've talked about that. Uh, uh, You know, again, to me, it's risky because I'm always concerned about what uh, uh, God is going to bless. But some of the things we talked about and we're going to talk about make me think think these these questionable things these questionable things that people are saying or not saying uh that somehow they know something we don't know and that we just got to get elected remember that's what trump said well first we have to get elected is that their strategy to get elected they think this is the way to get elected uh to me that is a scary way again embracing mammon political idolatry instead of God, standing on God's principles, God's absolute. Um, So, yeah, to me, it's risky, but uh, I'm hoping and praying that maybe that's what they're thinking. But we lost Trump's second term, I think, because we had a faulty strategy. All right. We may miss out on a second term again for the same type of faulty thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad situation to be in when our best hope is hoping that he's lying 
and that's where we're at. And so, yeah, of right. course that would be, right. and of course that would be wrong to do, right? To commit an evil to try to bring about a good. Um, now, Trump, yeah, he doesn't seem to care. So, uh, yeah, right. he he may just be lying, and then he gets in there and he he will do, um, you know, everything that we're hoping he would do. He just lied about it in advance. It's possible. That's our best hope at this point. Sadly, um, the, the Democrats, though, uh, they're going to keep pounding him on abortion. Yeah, the the ball may, might de- de- deflate some by him retreating. Um, at the same time, though. It's just him abandoning the field, and now they're able to frame it however they want to frame it and just keep hammering him, and he's not able to really fight back um, because he's not willing to fight on this issue. Here's an example. This comes from Tuesday. Uh, the, the, the House Democrats, uh, they had a, a, a press conference after they met in private. Uh, the report was they're meeting in private to talk about maybe replacing Joe Biden. Well, they came out and, you know, the spineless uh, politicians, they come out and they say, well, we're for whoever the Democrat nominee is. And, and let's talk about how bad Trump is. But they wouldn't say they wouldn't commit to Biden. They're just we'll, we'll commit to whoever the, the Democrat n- uh, nominee is. And and again, so this is how they started off. This is the vice chair of the House Democratic Caucus, uh, Ted Lieu. And um, yeah, right away, right out of the box, they want to hammer on abortion. Here it is. Donald Trump campaigned on overturning Roe versus Wade. Trump then appointed extreme mega justices who lied to the Senate and then proceeded to overturn Roe versus Wade. And then Trump bragged about overturning Roe versus Wade. Now Trump is trying to run away from that, but he can't. Why? Because in fact, Roe versus Wade was overturned. That's a thing. That's a fact. And millions of women have now lost rights. We also know that with Project 2025, this creepy document written by Trump's closest advisors and confidants, that they want to ban abortion nationwide. All right, so they're going to keep hammering. Here's Ted Lieu a little bit later on. Here it is. The first thing that's going to happen when we flip the House and hold the Senate is we're going to send the bill to codify Roe versus Wade to President Biden. He's going to sign it. That's the difference. That's what's at stake this election. Donald Trump would veto such a bill because Donald Trump caused Roe versus Wade to be overturned. And it's not just passing legislation. It's also he wants to hit the Supreme Court. Here it is. Who do these justices think they are? Do they really know biology and science and chemistry and all the things that experts need to know? No, they do not. This was a power grab for the conservative Supreme Court. And we're going to fix that uh, if we flip the House, hold the Senate, and we keep Donald Trump out of the White House. And the chair of the House Democratic Caucus, Pete Aguilar, confirms it here. He is saying the same two points. Because of the work that we're going to do together, because day one uh, we can pass a bill to codify Roe, because we can help address the runaway Supreme Court, because we can help working families, uh, those are the things that that matter to, to the candidates. All right. So what do you hear most there? What are the Democrats saying? Working families, they're third. But it's abortion and it's the Supreme Court. They've got their eye on the ball. They're pushing. Sadly, uh, the Republicans have retreated. Father, your thoughts? No, it's no, but it is the chess game, right? So let me ask you this, Jim. All right. In the question and answer period, do you think any of the questions of the reporters in that room were about abortion? No, they're about Biden. And is Biden going to be the nominee? Is Kamala Harris going to replace him? What are you going to do? Right. So the Democrats want to talk about everything and anything. And the two things they want to talk about is Trump bad, abortion bad. I mean, abortion good, Trump bad. Right. Uh, It really, really is interesting that that I guess I mean, is God's hand in this? I mean, I have to flesh this out and pray a little bit more about it. Uh, But. If they if the Democrats think that the solution to their chaos and their confusion in their ranks is to talk about the evil of abortion and somehow, uh, again, Trump derangement syndrome, which in our minds, um, you know, Trump is playing into their hands. um, I I don't think that's going to work either. I just don't think it's going to work for them. 
Uh, but at the same time, I, I just, you know, I don't think anybody can safely say what's going to happen in November based on where we are today, considering that one political party is purely evil, led by the Biden crime family. And the other political party seems to want to try and catch up in the evil realm, but remain a, just a tad less evil. Uh, now, polls are saying that abortion is not in the top five or six issues on people's minds. Uh, so again, we'll have to see. Yeah, we're going to be right back with much more. Stay tuned. The Simple Truth. Jim Havens here with Father Stephen Imbarato. So let's get to some reactions, some responses that we saw based on the National Republican Party's new platform, which has now uh, substantially weakened their position on human life. And uh, th this is one that um, th th that I th just struck me as quite odd. So this is from eminent uh, legal scholar and professor Robert George. On Facebook, he posted a, a long uh, post, a fairly long post. It was quite good in many respects. I really respect uh, Dr. Robert George. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of good things that I would agree with almost the entire thing. Thought it was great. But then he gets to this part. Listen to this. He says, to me, the long-term strategy must be to hold the Republican Party as or restore it to being a pro-life party. In other words, it must survive Trump as a party still committed to actually protecting unborn babies, indeed vindicating legislatively their constitutional right to the equal protection of the laws. That is something to be achieved ultimately, even if incrementally, step by step, by Congress. Yes, we must do everything we can in the states to protect unborn babies, but it is a both and rather than an either or matter and of course, what puzzles me here is that he's not calling on the Supreme Court to actually rule on abortion being unconstitutional. Sure, after they do that, can you take a legislative step just to cement it in with another, some legislative action, maybe even an amendment? Sure, you can cement it in even further. But the Supreme Court needs to rule on a proper interpretation of the 14th Amendment. We have an ongoing daily mass murder of our littlest brothers and sisters by the thousands every day in our nation. And this is a constitutional crisis. He doesn't seem to see it that way. But what's most puzzling is I thought he did because he put out the amicus brief in the Dobbs case with John Finnis where they were calling on the Supreme Court to rule for the personhood of the child in the womb. Is he just completely backing off from that now and saying that Congress needs to act? Forget about the Supreme Court. I guess I just don't understand this. Father, any thoughts you might have on it? Yeah, the only explanation is that they got the memo, right? The memo's out that we're going to sandbag this issue. But a couple of other things just popped into my head that create liabilities for us. And Robert George pointed out one, all right, that number one, all right, the pro-life movement leveraging, right, putting pressure on the Republican Party on Trump, all right, to return to its pro-life groundings, the pro-life movement has never, ever, ever shown itself to want to leverage their vote, leverage their influence, and get the Republican Party to do more, all right, or do anything, actually, other than throw us some crumbs, right, which we gladly accept. So there's a danger there. And then I think the other big thing that we're ignoring is uh, the fact that you have these referendums now, these abortion referendums up to 10 uh, all throughout the country, uh, where really the single, to me, this whole idea that they're too extreme is a losing strategy. It's the strategy that's made it allowed us to be 0 for 7 in these referendums uh uh, up till now, the, the the key argument, I think, is because it becomes a teaching moment for our side, 14th Amendment, constitutional rights, all right, guaranteed in the 14th Amendment from the moment of conception, that these referendums are all 
unconstitutional. So are we just now as a pro-life movement just going to give up the ship on the state abortion referendums, hoping that, well, we win in Florida because we have a 60% threshold. Well, that's not caring about the babies. That's not caring or putting pressure on the Republican Party about being the party of Lincoln, the party of abolition. Uh, You know, so, again, there's clear, clear confusion and chaos in the Democratic Party. But for people like you and me, we see the confusion and the chaos at a different level, a more important level, because it involves, right, the mass murder of the pre-born in the Republican Party, right? Uh, Do they really know what they're doing? Uh, I don't trust that they know what they're doing. I don't trust that they're going to do the right thing. They're not doing the right thing now. And I don't trust that they'll do the right thing if indeed Trump gets elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. and I think this is also, uh, I want to bring this to... Uh, to people's attention. I think this is instructive. So this is Marjorie Dannenfelser, SBA Pro-Life America. She was on CNN a few days before the initial approval and unveiling of this new Republican uh, national platform. Um, I guess as part of her lobbying effort to the platform committee, um, but, but listen to what she's actually lobbying for. Here it is. Your stance is a national abortion ban. You call it limits. Yeah, I mean, I, of course, am pro-life. I believe that, that life begins at conception. Also, I know that we're at a place in our country to build consensus. So, so the national limit, 15 weeks with exceptions, is such a moderate, modest. And that's what should be in the and platform? That, that would be a great extension of that fundamental language. That fundamental language is a 14th Amendment justification for any legislation. That should be retained. So you would be happy if there was a uh, a s- support for a national ban at 15 weeks with exceptions for the health of the mother, rape and incest. Yes, as long as that language stayed intact, okay. that appeals to the 14th. So I- All right, so she's continuing on w- with this nonsense, and this is what she's asking for. Imagine if she were asking for the fact that abortion is unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment. Start saying that. Put it in the platform. It's unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment, and we have a constitutional crisis, and the Supreme Court needs to rule on this and answer the question, are the pre-born human beings, are they persons or not? Of course they are. What else would they be? And again, this is pretty much, she represents the lobbying effort, the political lobbying effort uh, of the the pro-life um, pro-life leadership, mainstream leadership. In fact, you go to the website, it says who we are. It says Marjorie Dannenfelser and a group of pro-life women founded Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America in 1992 as the political arm of the pro-life movement. And so this is what the political arm of the pro-life movement is calling for. And then she mentions the 14th Amendment but she's not at all applying it in what she's saying. Let's just double down on that with one more clip and then Father will get your thoughts. Uh, Here it is, she talks a little bit more on the 14th Amendment. This is uh, very odd, here it is. We, you know, uh, the pro-life movement is not a function of the Republican Party. It's a one cause, uh, 14th Amendment press. It's the human rights movement of our day. We are not Republicans first and pro-lifers next. So it's all uh, what what Republicans do will determine what we do. Now, let me tell you what we are going to do. It is still a contrast. We're still in those battlegrounds. All right. So, look, I agree with her on the, the last point. Yep. we It's a binary choice. We've got to pick the better option, of course. So, yeah, we still got to keep uh, keep going here. But what did she say about the 14th Amendment? She said that the, that it's a full press on the 14th Amendment, that that's what the pro-life movement is doing, a full press on the 14th Amendment. Father, that's what you and I are doing. I don't think there's anybody else doing a full press on the 14th Amendment. What is she talking about? Oh, I'll tell you what she's talking about. Hey, every pro-life or serious pro-lifer who's listening, and I know everyone who's listening is a serious pro-lifer, except maybe some of the mainstream corporate leaders that pick up our show and watch our show to find out the truth about what's really going on. What if she sat there and said this, all right? Well, you know, the Democrats think it's okay to kill 
every single baby in the womb for any reason up to the day of birth. Whereas our platform, 15-week ban with rape and incest exceptions, we're going to create this contrast between the party of death, the Democrats, and we're saying that we're only willing to sacrifice 98% of the babies, right? And that's the difference. You want to kill all the babies. We don't want to kill all the babies, all right? We only want to kill 98% of the babies. Now, imagine... Right. If this was what was that movie with Jim Carrey, Liar, Liar. Right. We had to tell the truth. He had to tell the truth. If that's what came out of her. I mean, that's really, in essence, where she stands with this political idolatry. Right. But it's double talk. The, the knowledgeable pro-lifers. And again, no knowledgeable pro-lifer is is watching CNN. Uh, so nobody pro-life saw Margie Danafels on CNN, uh, but thank God we are showing the clip. You're showing the truth, right? It's double talk. It's lying. We talk about Trump is lying to us. Margie Danafels is lying. She's either lying all right, by saying that 15, 15 weeks with rape and incest exceptions, all right, or she's lying with we're full press on the 14th Amendment. What is it, March? You can't have it both ways. Yeah, she's she's definitely, and, and they're definitely not full press on the 14th Amendment. Uh, we are a good example of that. If, if somebody wants to know what full press on the 14th Amendment is, and, and look, no hard feelings. We invite everybody to join us. Pick, pick up what we're saying and just start saying it yourself. Go for it. You don't have to give us any credit. We just need to push forward for the sake of the thousands of children being murdered every day in our nation. Let's do a full press on the 14th Amendment. She was also asked about IVF right at the end. This is her response. Here it is. Would you like any protections for IVF in the platform? I think there, there's a lot of good conversation about this. I think that more fertility treatments are called for. Uh, the American public, poll after poll, says they don't like the development of a lot, a lot of embryos just to be destroyed. So that's the conversation we're having about. Do you want that. it to be part of the platform or stay out? I think it would be fine to communicate uh, what what the Republican Party is for in the platform. All right. So why not just say no? I hope they don't have protections for IVF in the platform because IVF is a, a, a barbaric practice, um, uh, technical, it's a, it's a new, uh, using technology in, in a barbaric way to, to, to have, create life outside of, of the womb, to create life in a laboratory, treat it as property, as a commodity that we get to do whatever we want with, including um, not only create life, but then discard life at will um, just because they're inconvenient. We don't want them anymore um, and, and also freeze them indefinitely. All of these horrible things that take place with IVF stand up for the baby, stand up for your the littlest brothers and sisters that, that she's asking you about. It, it just it, it, it drives me. Um, it just makes me. Um, very angry, I guess, Father. I think rightly so when I hear what is supposed to be a pro-life leader, supposedly the uh, the political arm of the pro-life movement, unwilling to stand up for the babies when they're being mass murdered every day. Yeah, look it. A preacher has to know who he's preaching to, right? And go to where the people are to bring their where they need to be. Margie had no concern about who the audience was that was listening. What an opportunity after that question to look in the camera and tell the people, look, and I know your audience has been lied to about IVF for years. Let me tell you the truth about IVF. Let me tell you the truth about how many embryonic babies die during IVF that we're freezing these embryonic babies after IVF, about selective reduction, et cetera, right? I mean, she could have used that as a teaching moment. And, and, and who would have been, CNN audience, maybe some of them would have been the wiser and may say, well, I didn't know that, right? I mean, what did she have to lose by saying that to that audience, right? Uh, it, it just goes to show 
that they're they're just steeped in them and not God, and uh, it, it's a scandal. It's a big scandal. Yeah. So we pray for Marjorie Dan and Felzer that uh, she would have a change of heart and mind, along with all the other mainstream pro-life leaders, and that all of us would actually press forward on the 14th Amendment. Abortion is unconstitutional. We've got to stand up for every single human life, beginning at conception, fertilization. We were all that size once. We made it out, right? We've got to stand up for those who are still in jeopardy. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Atheists claim they don't need God to be a good person, implying God's not relevant to morality. But is this true? Well, atheists can be good in the sense of knowing behaviors that respect the goods of human nature and living accordingly. St. Paul acknowledges this natural moral law in Romans chapter 2. But this doesn't mean God is irrelevant when it comes to morality. And here's the reason. Besides God's grace being necessary to live the moral law perfectly and merit heaven, God is necessary for the law to be morally binding. How can the moral law be binding if there's no moral law giver behind it that surpasses human authority? The answer is, it can't. So an atheist can follow the natural moral law, but only the theist is consistent in saying that such a law is morally obligatory. I'm Carlo Broussard with the ready reason for Catholic Answers, catholic.com. Simple Truth. Jim Havens here with Father Stephen Imbarato. I want to give you a friendly reminder. The 25th anniversary of the Station of the Cross is coming up on Saturday, August 24th. Niagara Falls, New York is where the event's going to be. Uh, hope you can join us, thestationofthecross.com for more information. Also, uh, save the date uh, on the next National Men's March to Abolish Abortion Rally for a person. This is where we can stand up publicly together and call for an end of this ongoing daily mass murder. We're going to be in Boston, Massachusetts, back to Boston. Third time's a charm. This is going to be the better than ever. We've had great events there in the past. This is going to be the best. Come and join us. Save the date. Go to the Men's March. Dot com. We've got information up there and more will be forthcoming. Also, sign that petition while you're there calling on the Supreme Court uh, to actually rule, take up a case and rule on uh, when do our inalienable rights begin. They begin at, at fertilization, conception fertilization, when human life comes into being. So let's call on them to, to uh, make that ruling. And so you can go to themensmarch.com, find the petition there as well. Father, final segment here and a few different ways we can go, but I guess I want to ask you this because I'm sure there are people in the audience who are wondering about it or have different views on it. It'd be great to get your view. I'm sure we've talked about this in in the past, but let's make it clear because it's very timely right now. If there is a politician who wants to take an incremental approach because they believe that, look, that's just where the culture is, I have to um, I have to somehow strike a compromise here. Isn't the only way that can be done is if that politician were to come out and say, look, this is evil uh, or something along these lines. Look, this is evil. Yes, we, we want to protect every single child from being directly, intentionally killed, murdered. Of course, we want to end this completely. Um, yet we understand the culture isn't there. Sadly, uh, we want to change hearts and minds. That's why I'm making it clear that this is wrong. I hope everybody starts to see it that way. That's the truth of it. Yet we understand this is where we are. So that's why our policy right now is an incremental one. And so here's what we believe is the next step. And then you present it that way. Um, that's a big difference from what we heard from Marjorie Dannenfelser offering her incremental position in the last segment where she, she, she knows what we're talking about here, but what does she do? She doesn't make it clear and make it strong. She just says, well, well I'm pro-life and then goes into um, her incre- and then talks incessantly about the incremental uh, approach that she wants to do. And that's what we're seeing from the likes of maybe Marco Rubio coming out and saying certain things. Well, I'm pro-life, but and then going into the incrementalism and just so they're not sufficiently talking about the evil reality that is before us. Uh, they're just kind of poo-pooing it and getting into the incrementalism. That's wrong. That That is not a, a, a good approach. That, that's that's an immoral approach. It's just not sufficient, is it, Father? Your thoughts? 
no, incremental is dead. All right. One of the results of Dobbs overturning Roe versus Wade is the whole concept of incrementalism is dead. If we did not have the Supreme Court, if we did not have a 6-3 majority in the Supreme Court, mostly Catholic, if we didn't have 2270, if we didn't have the 14th Amendment, uh, we could talk about incrementalism. Right. Incrementalism was a pro overturning of the Roe versus Wade strategy. We have the 14th Amendment, and now we have this this absolute solution remedy to the mass murder, the denial of the constitutional rights of the pre-born. And our sole focus should be asking the Supreme Court the simple question, right? And you and I, I mean, have asked this question and put it out so many different ways, but in its simplest form, Supreme Court of the United States. Every person in the United States is guaranteed equal protection under the law. Our inalienable right cannot be taken away without due process. These 14th Amendment rights, when did we receive them? Every single person in the United States, when did we receive those rights? We want an answer to that question. That should be the only thing we're discussing. The fact that we're discussing everything and anything is just a detraction from this simple question and the answer that we need to be given, the answer we need to hear, right? Um, and, and, and that's the fact. The overturning of Roe versus Wade puts, put us into a 21st century version of 1858 post-Dred Scott pre-Civil War America, right, and 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 the mainstream corporate pro-life movement is now running from that, just running from that. And they know, Jim, you know, we have been their conscience and we're pricking their conscience, right? I think if it wasn't for me and you, we wouldn't be hearing anything from them about the 14th Amendment. But now what they're trying to do is kind of like placate, placate us and still try and get their their agenda out there. And the contradictions are so blaring, right, that that again, they, they think that, well, nobody's going to see it because we're the only ones talking about it. But this is a great show today. That that was a devastating interview. All right. Uh, of Margie Danifels on CNN. All right. Uh, because you would think her knowing she was going on CNN, you think that you would have some adequate answers. Her answers were inadequate. They were scandalous. They were immoral. And she was even she was actually doing a Biden. Uh, 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 you could see that she didn't even know how to answer. She didn't even give any thought about it. All right. And I'm telling you, the pro-lifers should be prayerful, con contemplative. And anyone who's praying and contemplating and meditating on our Lord's will and what our Lord wants, right, knows what he wants, right? He wants the abolition of the mass murder of his babies through constitutional personhood by recognizing the inalienable right to life from the moment of conception. And that's what you call a true press on the 14th Amendment. There it is. That's what it sounds like. That's what we need to be doing um, Father, wh wh whatever, um, wh wh you've got the floor. Whatever else you want to share with us in our final minutes today, go for it. Uh, uh, two things, all right, and they both involve prayer. Uh, first, that, that, that prayer intention that I put forth in the beginning of the show, that this chaos, this confusion, and again, you know, Obama's uh, pastor way back when, Reverend Wright, Reverend Wright, I remember him because your father-in-law's name is your, your father-in-law's Mr. Wright and Reverend Wright is the wrong right. Uh, but the chickens have come home to roost right for the Democratic Party. This confusion, this chaos, may it continue, all right, uh, and that it continues through the election and it allows the Republicans to win. But that would be a meaningless win if the Republicans don't have a change of heart and mind and go back to the party of Lincoln, the party of abolition. So that's the one prayer intention. The other prayer intention, that the mainstream corporate pro-life movement that I've been praying by name every single day, Margie Danifels, Lila Rose, Abby Johnson, Sean Carney, Frank Pavone, uh, Kristen Hawkins, 
by name, that they have a change of heart and mind, and they start standing on the constitutional absolute and the moral absolute of constitutional person from the moment of conception, because they have at their disposal, in their hands, the power and the influence to turn the tide on this issue. And instead of allowing all all these millions of people who follow them to be steeped in misinformation and disinformation, to have clarity on this issue, and then I think regardless of the outcome in November, we can convince the Supreme Court uh, to do the right thing and recognize constitutional person from the moment of conception. And everybody out there, we don't need the Congress. We don't need the Senate. We want the Congress. We want the Senate. We want the presidency. We need one court case, one court case that will force the Supreme Court to recognize constitutional person from the moment of conception. So that's, that's what I want to say. Pray, 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 fast, fast, fast. God's will be done. That is what we have to focus on. We have to unite around what will God bless. I believe he blesses this absolutism that you and I talk about each week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven. Amen.